In this video, we're going to talk about how to apply systems of inequalities to some sort of word problem. So the key with this is we're going to look for any equations that we can pull out of the word problem, graph them, and then find the shaded area. Okay, so we'll start with this first one. Renee's pet store never has more than a combined total of 20 cats and dogs. They also never have more than eight cats. How many of each type of pet can they have at the pet store? All right, so when we look at this one, um, it's always a good idea to start with a let statement for these to define our variables. And I'm just going to, and you can do this in the opposite order and your graph will look a little different, but I'm going to let x be the cats. We'll let x be the number of cats at the pet store, and we'll let y equal the number of dogs. Okay, again, if you had dogs first and cats second, your graph would just kind of be flip-flopped from mine, but it'll still be, you know, kind of the correct answer. All right, so we'll let x be the number of cats and y be the number of dogs, and now we're going to try and write an equation from this. So one thing that they tell us is that the pet store never has a, more than a combined total of 20 cats and dogs. All right, this is one of those equations that works like a total, and note that I'm going to use an equal sign here. I know that this is an inequality, but just to get started, an equal sign is okay. Um, so I know that there's a total of 20, so something x plus something y should equal our total, which is 20. And in this case, since it's the number of pets, we should have the cats plus the dogs should equal 20. Now, let's change this over back to an inequality. Since it is not more than the number of cats and dogs here on the left should be less than or equal to 20. So the cats and dogs that I have should be less than or equal to 20. And that should take care of the first equation. All right. Let's look at the second kind of helpful piece of information here. It says they also never have more than eight cats. So they never have more than eight cats. So if we think about that, they didn't even really talk about the dogs, which are y. They just talked about the cats. So I'm going to write this equation as the cats, x, have to be, since they can't be more than eight, they have to be less than or equal to eight. And now we're all set up to go. Now since I have x as cats, on the x-axis, I'm going to label this axis as the number of cats. And on the y-axis here, I'm going to label this the number of dogs. So number of dogs. Okay. And now I'm just going to pick a scale for my graph. Um, since it looks like we have uh, 20 here for our graph. And actually, you know what? I think before that I actually write the scale, it's always a good idea to, um, I'm going to find the x and the y intercepts for this line. So you might think that slope intercept form is always your best bet, and a lot of times it is, but for these problems, it's a lot easier if you find the x and y intercepts and just connect the two dots. So in this case, um, if I plug in 0 for the x, I would get that the y, and we don't really need the or equal to or the less than signs when we're just solving for these points, um, we would get that the y intercept would be at 20. And if we did the same thing for the x, excuse me, we would have x plus 0 equals 20. We would get that the x-intercept is also at 20. So that would give us an x-intercept at 20 comma 0 and a y-intercept at 0 comma 20. And I'm not even going to do this one. This should just be a vertical line passing through 8, so it's not really that important to list out the intercepts here. But let's go ahead and start by graphing the intercepts. So since I need to go up to 20, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 lines here. I think I'm going to go up by 2. So we'll go 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, uh, 14, 16, 18 and 20, so that'll take care of the x-axis. We're going to do the same thing across the top, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20. Okay, so now that we've got our graph labeled with the axes and the numbers, uh, let's go ahead and start graphing this. So I know that I have an x-intercept at 20, and a y-intercept at 20. And at this point, if you have a ruler, it's a good idea to connect them. Um, but also, if you take the um, x-intercept and the y-intercept and divide them, so if you take the y-intercept divided by the x-intercept and flip the sign, that's another way, actually, that you can get the, uh, the slope. So 
you can actually see there that our slope is negative 1. And again, if you don't, don't know that, that's not a big deal. You just, if you have a ruler, it's nice and easy to connect the dots. Since I can't use a ruler on this, I'm just trying to keep it accurate here. Okay, and now we'll go to the blue line. This should be a vertical line crossing through 8. It has just an X, so this is just going to be a straight up and down line. You may be wondering why I don't have all the quadrants on the graph. The reason I only have, you know, this part of the graph that I'm looking at is because I can't have a negative number of cats or a negative number of dogs. It only makes sense to have, you know, the part of the graph that's out here. Okay, now we just need to figure out where to shade. So if we look here, this x plus y, this red line, is a less than or equal to 20. Now, if I isolate the y, that's the safest way to tell. If this was a minus y, I'd actually have to flip the sign. But um, if we try a point 2, like 0, 0, 0 plus 0 is less than or equal to 20. So that would be true. We're going to have to shade below the red line. And the blue line here would also be a less than line. So we're going to have to take this back here. And you can see that the arrows are both pointing to this section of the graph, which should be kind of our final answer in here. Okay, so this little kind of shaded area on the graph should be our final answer. Now, if the problem asks you to do some linear programming and find, like, the optimal solution, what you're going to have to do, and this, most people, you can stop the video now, but uh, if you had to find the, the best answer, you would have to look at each of these corner points on the corner of the shaded region, and that's going to tell you, uh, one of those will tell you what the best answer is. You know, if they're trying to maximize their profit or minimize the cost of these animals, um, you would have some sort of objective function that you would have to find out, you know, when you plug in the ordered pair for X and Y, which one is going to optimize the profit. But I'm not going to get into that in this video. I may get into that in a later video. This one's just about how to graph the system of inequalities.